Welcome to the Grace Hour, the live international talk radio ministry of Greater Grace Church in Baltimore, Maryland. You can join us on the air today by calling 1-800-338-7060 or 410-483-3700 from outside of the United States. Now, here is our host. And welcome, friends, to this edition of the Grace Hour. Again, we are broadcasting live right here from our studios, which are located at the home of the Greater Grace World Outreach in Baltimore, Maryland. And great to be with you on this Thursday afternoon, friends. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you'll stay with us for the next hour. We'll get things started in just a couple of moments with a message from Grace Hour, founder, host of the broadcast for many, many years before he went home to be with his Savior. And that'll be a message from Pastor Carl Stevens entitled, Faith Experience as Your Self-Image. And again, we're continuing to develop our theme here throughout this week, which is our identity in Christ. And I think that you'll find this message really adds to what we've been talking about and only serves to enhance this overall theme uh, throughout this week on the Grace Hour. So stay tuned for that message. That'll be coming up in just a couple of moments. Following Pastor Stephen's message, of course, we'll open the phone lines and welcome you to the broadcast. Uh, we do encourage you to pick up a phone and dial one of the following numbers and join us live with your comments, questions, testimonies. If you have a counseling need, we're here to help in any way we can. And if you have a prayer request and you'd like to share that request with the body of Christ, we would be more than happy to pass it along and have the body of Christ worldwide join you for whatever those needs may be. Again, when those phone lines are open, get to a phone, dial one of the following numbers. Toll free in all of North America, well, that number is 800-338-7060. That's the toll free number, 800-338-7060. And the local number right here in the Baltimore area, if you'd like to join us, friends, and we hope you will. 410-483-3700. And we'll give you those numbers throughout the broadcast as well and encourage you to join us when those phone lines are open. If you can't get to a phone and you'd like to uh, quickly send us an email, please feel free to do so. Our email address is questions at gracehour.org. I want to welcome our local listeners on WRBS right here in Baltimore. Thanks for joining us today. And we appreciate your participation in the broadcast as well. And maybe... Some of you that are listening locally on WRBS have never given us a call. Please do and introduce yourself to us here at the Grace Hour so we can get to know you a little better as well. Everyone else is listening to the broadcast live on the Internet at gracehour.org. And, of course, we have a contingent of folks that regularly watch us and listen to us on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Welcome to everyone on this Thursday edition of the Grace Hour. Let's turn our attention right away to Pastor Stephen's message. Again, it's entitled, Faith Experience as Your Self-Image. Satan tries to get in control over the Christian through experience. Because we are creatures of repetition, habits of redundancy, because our brain has been programmed to live out what we've been taught through the years in Adam, in education, and in religion. When Jesus Christ comes into our lives, it is very easy several times a week to go back into your old experience. I don't mean out in the world, but to go back into your, at least mentally, your experiences. For example, if somebody here, and believe me, I'm not addressing anybody. God knows I'm not. I'm not. I don't do that in the pulpit. I, no matter what you think, I don't address people in the pulpit. I address, I address the entire congregation with the spontaneous anointing. And I don't select what it's going to be, and God gives it in front of that pulpit. But what happens is Satan tries to take your experience and make your experience become your self-image. Now, Satan wants experience to determine our projections, our relationships, 
and I plan. He wants experience to do it. You know the reason that multitudes of people don't get healed? It's because they have had an experience of being sick. You know why a lot of people will not leave the bow rooms and come home to their wives? Because they've experienced a long time a desire to drink before they did it. And now they don't let it up. And they'll go out and raise hell and then lie about it and act like nothing happened. But they keep fulfilling the flesh. Do you know what it means to fulfill the lust of the flesh? To go back into the old experience. Life sometimes, even when you're doing reasonably well, you are doing reasonably well. There isn't anything terribly happening to you. But after you've had a few hours or a few days of doing well, your experience wants to change. And you want to do what is comfortable, relaxing for you in a mental attitude sin. You know, for some people, it's depression. Depression is a way out to withdraw into self with anger of some kind. But experience... Now, do you know what immorality is? An experience with the libido ways to satisfy the need of lust. An experience with the libido ways to temporarily satisfy the lust of the flesh by fulfilling it. Do you know what drugs are? A temporary chemical sedative to fulfill a need to relax through the demonic cosmos. That's what drugs are. You know what anger is? A release of the old sin nature which has been suppressed so the old sin nature can be real in revealing what you're really like. You know what jealousy is? The most intoxicated charge of Satan in world history. And by the way, you may read Exodus 34 and say, God is a jealous God. I'm sorry, he's not. That's anthropopathic. God doesn't have a jealous bone in his body. The only kind of jealousy that can be related to God is the jealousy that wants to protect you, to keep you in happiness. That's all. It's nothing individual with God. It's for your sake, but not for his. Jealousy of man is for man's sake and not for God's. So we have this doctrine of experience, the doctrine of experience. And my self-image relates to my experience, and my experience determines my self-image. Now, a lot of you compromise your convictions a little bit because you satisfy what the world expects for your experience. I've been studying in dictionaries of all things sentimentality for the last two weeks. I've, I've looked it up. I've got around 15 different dictionaries, old ones, new ones, you name it, machines and computers. My friend wants me to go to meet with someone so I can hear garbage about the church. Sentimentality. Sentimentality over somebody that you're trying to win you don't win them by sentimentality. You win them by not compromising the cross. When I was unsaved, I didn't want somebody to compromise with me. I wanted to see somebody that was totally different than I was and stuck to it no matter what I did because I challenged the daylights out of them with rationalistic questions that were planned to get them upset. Experience. Experience. We can't have reconciliation because of our past experience. See? No faith in it. No love in it. No God in it. Self is in it with evidence of truth. Nobody is going to experience Jesus Christ's life without Jesus Christ's faith. God always arranges an address of his character... He addresses us with his promises so that we must have faith without experience. The first precious thing of a believer that pleases God, he believes the word, he believes the promises, and it produces a faith without experience. All right, number two, 
Faith doesn't have experience. So therefore, faith serves by love without any experience. Galatians 5, 6. Faith serves by love without having to have an experience. Number three, faith never critiques experience. It takes God's character to change situations. It never critiques experience. It takes God's character and believes in God's power to change a situation. How many understand that? Number four, the believer who's experiencing the wrong things becomes still to get to know God by faith. He becomes still to get to know God by faith. That's Psalm 46, 10, and 1 Thessalonians 4, 11, and he studies to be quiet. Number five, faith will always bring in a faith experience without sight. Faith will always bring in a faith experience without sight. Number six, faith will always bring in a faith experience without feelings. I'm talking about first now. Later those things come. Don't misunderstand me. Thank God they come. But I'm dealing with true faith that doesn't live by experience. Number seven, experience always follows true faith when true faith lived without experience. Number eight, to experience Christ's life without cosmic support is the greatest personal experience of life. To experience Christ's life without cosmic support is the greatest experience of life. How many understand that one? Number nine, my self-image is based upon faith in Christ, never my experience with Christ. Got that one? My self-image is based upon my position in Christ, never my experience in Christ. Number 10, circumstances can't change my faith experience. Circumstances or people cannot change my faith experience experience. Now we get into what we call progressive revelation of sanctification. Point 11. God always sends tribulation to give me faith's experience. God always sends in Romans 5, 2, and 3. Tribulation, verse 3, so I can what? Experience faith. Number 12, this is the one thing that pleases God more than anything else in the angelic conflict. This is the one thing that pleases God more than anything else in the angelic conflict. Number 13, Satan's angels flee when my faith experience in tribulation doesn't waver. Demons flee when my faith experience in tribulation doesn't waver, they say, hey, don't waste your time on that crowd. Come back and get them another month. They'll probably give you an opening. Let them have fun for a month because they're not doing, we can't do a thing to them. What am I now at number 14? All right. The only way to please God is to go from faith to faith and never let sight or circumstances take over. That's Romans 1, 17. The only way to please God is to go from faith to faith and not let circumstances of sight take over. And finally, I think, number 15, the victory that overcomes what Satan has done is a faith experience. That means I claim my healing against my experience. I confess healing, Philemon 6, against my experience. I claim victory over sin against my experience. I claim victory over disease against my experience. I claim victory for others who are against me against my experience. That is 1 John 5, 4 and 4, 4. 
and it's faith overcoming the world of experience. So therefore, you and I have an identity in Christ. All right, now give me those 15 points, spontaneous, word for word, back without notes. All right, so what pleases God? Faith. What overcomes the worldly experiences? Faith. What constitutes my self-image regardless of circumstances and experiences? Faith in Jesus Christ's finished work for me and as me. Faith in Jesus Christ's finished work for me and as me. Not just for me, but as me. He died as you. You had to die, but he died as you. That's how it's recorded in God's record book. Now, what do I do with my faith? The Bible says that, so I believe that, and that gives me a faith experience. And faith experience leads to life experience with Christ without anything changing yet. And then God sends tribulation so I can experience faith experience and then an experience with Christ's life. And if the tribulation makes me go back to sublimation, it reveals I don't have any faith experience. Faith experience isn't speaking in tongues. It's believing in a promise. Quite a difference, folks. It's not speaking in tongues. The greatest victory in the world is for someone in their worst state to get up and say, Jesus loved me, I'm brand new, I'm a new creature, and I'm walking in a brand new direction without any evidence at all of change except they're going to do it by faith and they start walking in the right direction. That's faith experience. Let me paraphrase it. Here it goes. Here it goes. The greatest single experience that a human being can have on earth is this, to become a living epistle. Let's say you're single. Let's say your Mother Teresa, who is a, who is a born... I know you, you're going to say she does works. I don't care if you call it works. She's a wonderful woman. She's done a great job. Another great champion in the Roman Catholic faith that I quote occasionally is the late Bishop Sheen. Don't agree with all of his theology, but agree 100% with the way he lived. You understand what I said? You know why? He was a living epistle. Now, when an individual created in the image of God becomes a living epistle, they have reached the zenith of human experience. They have fulfilled the reason they were created in God's image. Number two. Number three, everything they do brings pleasure to God in the angelic conflict. Number four, you can't make them quit. They fulfill their goals and fulfill the will of God. It's a marvelous thing to be an epistle written among men by what comes out of your hearts. I love it. And you know what? All of you are heading that. If you haven't arrived, you're heading that way. I want to build you up because it's true. You're hungry for the word. You're sweet. You're sensitive. You're growing. You're after God. So even if God wouldn't declare you to be a living epistle, you're on your way. And if you died tonight, it would be accounted unto you being a, a living epistle because you, by faith you're on your way. Well, what is a living epistle? A living epistle has done the following things. A, see how these doctrines flow out. A, reckless abandonment. Reckless abandonment. Reckless abandonment means I don't get offended. Reckless abandonment means I accuse nobody. I have no blame games. Reckless abandonment means I live in the consequences of my choice no matter what happens. Reckless abandonment means Christ is my all in all, honey, and you'll have to come second. A living epistle, first of all, experiences reckless abandonment. Let me illustrate it 
with a, with a little illustration from the Word of God. John 21, when Peter, in response to John's recognition of Christ in the post-resurrection scene, it was all night fishing, caught nothing, and John said, it's the Lord. Peter didn't have brains enough to figure that out. <laughs> Peter jumped out of the boat and dog paddled in <laughs> to meet the Lord. It was reckless abandonment. He, he would always do that. Might not last, but he would do it. Reckless abandonment. When Jesus addressed the people that wanted to be disciples, it was always addressing them with reckless abandonment. If you live in reckless abandonment, you can come. If you won't, let's not go. I'm not, nothing against you. You're still going to be blessed. You're still going to be used. But if you really want to be my disciple, it's reckless abandonment. If you don't, you're still going to go to heaven. You're still going to be blessed. You'll still be happy because of grace. But you've got to make a decision. Do you want discipleship or residential happiness with measures of self-preservation while you remain a decent Christian. How many are willing to pay the price of becoming a living epistle? A living epistle lays down its life and people step all over you sometimes. It's First John 3.16. Reckless abandonment never goes back on its call, meaning with Christ. I don't mean in locations and any of that stuff, but in far as being faithful to Christ. But here's the most important thing. Reckless abandonment is willing to suffer for the body's sake instead of fighting with the body. Colossians 1, 2, 4, 124. Learn what it means to suffer for the body's sake. And if you do, that's part of becoming a living epistle in reckless abandonment. Well, that's the conclusion, friends, of today's Grace Hour message. Um, a good one. Faith experiences your self-image. And talk about a message that helps us to even, in a greater way, understand our identity in Christ. Some great thoughts. And, of course... All of those thoughts related to the exercise and the experience of faith based upon the promises of God. Well, you're listening live to the Grace Hour, friends, on this Thursday afternoon. We're opening the phone lines to give you, our listening audience, an opportunity to weigh in and to share your thoughts with us. Uh, we'll keep the phone lines open right up until the end of the hour, uh, which means plenty of time for you to, again, dial one of these numbers and join us live. And we look forward to hearing from you. 800-338-7060. That is the toll-free number in all of North America, Canada, including the United States as well. And locally in the Baltimore area, you can join us at 410-483-3700. And we hope to hear from many of you today. Your comments are welcome. Your questions, um, again, share them with us. If you have any kind of a counseling need that we could assist you with, we're here to help in any way we can. Just give us a call on one of those numbers. And, you, of course, those of you listening and watching on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, you could always send us your comments and questions anytime during the broadcast. And we will do everything here in our studios to help you um, get some answers to your questions. And, of course, we always appreciate your, your comments as well. But some great thoughts as we sat back and listened to this message here in the studio. Uh, all of those principles of faith that Pastor Stevens outlined for us in a message like that. You could take just one of them or a couple of them and highlight them, develop them. Uh, but without a doubt, um, faith, that's the victory that overcomes the world. Uh, that's the victory that overcomes the flesh. That's the victory that overcomes the devil. Um, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And our identity in Christ, as we heard in that message, uh, is based solely upon what the Word of God says. It's not feelings, it's not our emotions, it's not even our experience. We can have some good experiences, but good experiences don't necessarily lead us into an understanding of our identity in Christ. That can only come through the Word of God. God's promises, which remind all of us of who we are in Him. 
So take advantage of this opportunity, friends, and join us live on the Grace Hour so that uh, all of us can learn what it means to become, as he said towards the end of that message, it means to become living epistles known and read of all men because uh, what happens in our lives as we mix faith with the promises of God becomes well, undeniable. You cannot deny the reality of what God has done by giving us a new nature, a new way of thinking, a new way of living, a new way of choosing, all because, again, the new nature has been brought into our lives through the new birth, and that's through faith in Christ. Join us, friends. We're going to reach the end of the first half hour here in a matter of moments, but we uh, are looking forward to having many of you join us live. Again, those phone numbers, toll-free, 800-338-7060. And locally, right here in Baltimore, we want to encourage our local listeners to join us. And as we said earlier, you may be, well, you might be listening to the Grace Hour. You may be a new listener. You maybe you've been listening for some time locally here in Baltimore, but you've never reached out to us, never given us a call. We'd love to hear from you, and you can let us know uh, that you're a new listener to the broadcast or you've been listening now for some time and you enjoy it you've never taken the opportunity to give us a call and introduce yourself to us. Just do that today, friends. We would certainly welcome uh, to hear from our new listeners right here in the greater Baltimore area. So again, um, we're going to conclude this half hour, move into the second half hour, hopefully with many of your phone calls. Don't forget, if you'd like to join us from overseas, you can do that as well. Just dial 410-483-3700. And everyone else, you can use that toll-free number, 800-338-7060. Um, because, again, faith allows you and I to experience the self-image that God has given us through faith in Christ. And if you don't have that new self-image by faith, it's something that you want to experience. Uh, again, because you don't want to move through this life. You don't want this journey to continue without Again, exercising faith in the promises of God that gives us that healthy, godly self-image. Thanks for joining us, friends. If you have to sign off, if not, stay with us. Another half hour coming right up. We're back with you live at gracehour.org, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. And many of you are joining us, and some of you have weighed in already, Julie, watching and listening to the Grace Hour in Great Britain. And Carol Ann from Corpio, Finland. BJ is listening up in Manchester, Pennsylvania. And David has written in and said, wow, what a portion that was. Thank you, Pastor Stevens, for that message. Yes, agreed, David. Uh, rich and uh, really helps us to give, well, gives us a greater understanding of what faith has done for us and in our lives. And Pastor Schaller has joined us in the studio on this Thursday broadcast, and we're just waiting for your phone call. So again, don't hesitate. Don't wait till the end of the broadcast. Pick up that phone and dial one of those numbers right away and join us on the Grace Hour. Pastor Love, the, um, the, the message, the experience, and the experience dictated in my faith or man really being able to transcend his experience and relate to God, uh, this is at the very heart of what was said, that man is able to transcend what he has experienced and how that experience can dictate to his life. And Pastor mentioned um, there can be uh, bad habits that that I'm constantly relating to in my identity, a, um, uh, a man or woman addicted uh, to a, a vice. They, they want to stop, but they can't, and their experience drives them. It can be hormonal, uh, pharmaceutical. It can be um, just habitual by routine, by a habit. Uh, and how common that is. We are human beings. I mean, we are, we are trained in our neuro neurology. We are um, 
conditioned, we have um, uh, neurological pathways that we habitually uh, practice. And for a pastor to say, no, you actually uh, are born again and able to live in faith and not uh, relate to yourself, you know, strictly on those terms. But we, in a way, we, we, uh, the message was designed to encourage us to look above and beyond, kind of like um, Numbers 21 when the Jews were bitten by the serpents. They could look and study the snake bite and die where they could look up at the cross and be healed. So there's a good example, I think, of how your experience is not to dictate to you, but there's another avenue, another way. There's a life of faith. Uh, so, um, you know, he defined it with those 15 points and uh, making, you know, notes along the way as he was speaking. Um there, there's not feelings. Uh, uh, there is a real experience, but it's not the, the starting point. Uh, we, we easily can do wrong things, and that experience uh, drives us. Um, but actually, uh, when Jesus came into the world, he was really leading us in faith. And repeatedly, repetitively, he was was uh, guiding the disciples to think in terms of God. You know, why, how long must I be with you? And he rebuked the sea and the wind. O oh, ye of little faith, it's a it's an indicator there, isn't it? That actually, there's a whole world of of God that we we want to discover, and this will give us a new experience and um and and it'll help us uh so that was what the message is about yeah and it, and it was a good one with so many great principles and you know as you were speaking about all of those experiences that can lead to such you know devastating effects in, in people's lives and their souls can become conditioned uh, early on in life Peter, in his epistle, 2 Peter 1, verse 3, says, you know, God has given us everything we need to live a life of godliness through the knowledge of him. And he's given us these exceeding great and precious promises whereby we can become partakers of the divine nature, and then we can escape the corruption that's in the world. There is an escape for that kind and that type of living, whether it's immorality or it's pharmaceutical or depression, you know, any of all of those things, you can escape that way of living, but it can only happen through the promises of God. Yeah. It, uh, we, of course, we have our language, and some people could say, you know, well, I've heard this before, or yes, I know, like, that's the way it should be, but... And and I realize that yes, I agree. I I think that's um, we're not denying. Uh, oh, I believe, but help my unbelief. I I know, but let's let's try to get a grip of what is being said. In short, that too many lives are defined by these experiences, and too many times people give up and say, you know, there's nothing more for me but to just cave to what I've always done, recognize myself in the context of that, and give up. And that's all that I have. And I think that's a, that's an error. That's wrong. Like, that's what we heard in the message. It's like, no, wait a minute. Think again about it. You've got to You've got to believe that our God is a lot bigger than our problems and our habits. We have to believe that this is something amazing. So we make God small and our habits big. Yeah. You know, and I think we got to think about it again and say, wait, actually, my experience is this one. But wait a minute, I'm going to put the brakes on. Stop right there. 
I'm going to get down in my in my heart. I'm going to get down in my, you know, before the living God. I'm going to, you know, embrace and and confess, and believe Him, and uh, and walk by faith. Not only will will I stumble and fall at different times, but I will get up. I will get up again seven times, right? And I get up again, and um, then the Lord is going to define for me my life. It would be one thing if God said, this is, this is your conditioned soul over these many years, but I'm asking you to change. He, he doesn't say that. He doesn't come to us and say, I have a... Uh, behavior modification program that I would like to start and implement in your life. He comes and he says, you need a new nature. You need a new heart. You need a new mind. You need a new way of thinking. And he gives that to us, which makes change possible. If he just simply said, listen, I can't accept you the way you are, but if you change, I could. Well, Mm -hmm. that would leave us like victims saying, well, I, I, if I could change, I would. I can't. But when we say I can't, God says, well, I can. I'll give you that new heart. I'll give you that new nature. I'll give you a new way of thinking. And we've learned that. We've learned that. through. It's taken some time and years. But for someone to say, I can't change, this is who I am, this is who I will always be, that simply isn't true. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It takes no faith to make that kind of declaration. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know sometimes there has to be you got to hit the bottom maybe and to realize wait a minute I don't like the way I'm living I I think uh, you don't have to be in Skid Row to say I don't like the way I'm living I think you can just be a Beltway suburbanite. Um, just living day to day and just say, I don't like the way I'm living. I, I, I'd like to see something happen. I'd like to see a change. Not changing my, my, my football team or changing my, my, my sleeping habits or changing my diet. I, I, I want a real, I want a real game changer. I want God uh, to come into my life. Wow. Yeah, and he will. And he does. Yes, yes. It works. Yeah. Let's go to the phones. Pat, uh, Pat Khaleesi is joining us right here from the Baltimore area. Pat, welcome to the Grace Hour. Go ahead. Hi, Pastor Love and Pastor Shala. Uh, I was listening to the show. I heard the part about reckless abandonment, and I just, I really got excited about it because many of us, and even today, the kids today in Bible college have left everything with reckless abandon meant to just come and learn of God. And to incorporate today's message, uh, last night's message, about how God takes the ordinary people and fills them with his Holy Spirit and tells them extraordinary things to share with the rest of the world. (laughs) And I just, how exciting that is, that he would use a sinner like us Sinners like us, that so when people tell us, "Oh, great, great, that was great," you're you're the smartest in the class, or you're the, you're doing. I go, I am what I am by the grace of God, and if we keep the balance of all of it, that we can leave everything with reckless abandonment and just have ordinary people speak extraordinary things. It's an exciting, exciting time to watch what's going on in our church today that are coming in droves to go to school because they've given it all up and they're just ordinary people speaking extraordinary things and i'm loving it it is fun to see it yeah do you see do you see yourself and some of these young people oh yeah these they're all bright-eyed and excited and yeah. I um, I said to someone last night, a young man, and um, I said, I, I'm not I'm not crazy, but I feel like God just told me to be your prayer warrior. He goes, really? I go, yeah. If that's okay with you, I want to pray for you because you're going to be going going through some hard times. 
I said, but God has something so much to give you. I said, I know because I've been here 40 years and I can, I can tell you it's going to be difficult, but the end is worth it. At the very end, it's worth all that you're going to go through. And if you want me to pray, I will anytime. And he goes, oh, thank you. And he, and he is one of our foreign students. And it was amazing. So right. yeah, I see my, I see me in them and I want to mm-hmm. give them all that I can give them to, if I can save them from like, oh, okay. I mean, I can't go through this. You, like you say it a thousand times. I can't go through this. I can't do this. And God says, relax, I got this. And if you can bring someone through going through a hard time, you know, maybe we won't lose some. Maybe they'll all make it. Mm-hmm. And that's my hope and my prayer. Oh, that's beautiful. That is. I like that part in Luke 10 when when Jesus was so glad. He was so glad that the Father had not revealed these things to the wise and prudent. But to these, uh, you know, these babes, these Y- y- young ones, inferior, you could say, the common uh, class, you know, the people. But the Father showed them. Uh, so common people, ordinary people were, were spoken, uh, you know, uh, great things that kings, kings have desired to see. You know, they, the Herod wanted to see Jesus do a miracle. He would do none. And kings have desired to see what Christ was doing and speaking and teaching. But he didn't he didn't reveal it reveal them to uh you know, the uh that group of people. He went to the the, the poor and the the people that didn't have much at all, but they were humble and he revealed himself and they spoke extraordinary things and changed the history of the world. Man, I was saying this morning, I said, Paul was a great, great teacher, but I loved Peter's enthusiasm because that kind of reminds me of me myself. Just, just, I don't know anything, but I'm going to do it. I'm going out there <laughs> and whatever, you know, yeah. I, I'm just, I've got so much enthusiasm and I, I, I'm, I'm hoping it stays so I can just share it with anyone I can. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's great. Yes. There's the, I love the fact that you, you know, approached that young Bible college student and committed yourself to pray for him. What a, what a blessing. And we want you to know, Pat, that you can do that for us, too. Amen. I will. <laughs> we'll take it. But Thank you. I just felt led at the moment. I said, I know you're going to think I don't even really know you. I said, but God just put this on my heart. And he was like, what? I said, but I got 40 years experience. He says, what? (laughs) Yeah, but you know, uh, it kind of went along with the message too, that, that we are, um, the, the people that are amongst us, we do have to make some effort to sit where they sit, realize where they're at to, uh, have, uh, you know, it might happen spontaneously. But in any way, there's a, a ministry of, of faith or ministry of mercy or of love or wisdom, and uh, it builds up the body. So you were, hey, you were building up somebody yesterday. Yeah. Thank you, because we realize this is not an easy road four years of Bible college. They're going to go through it because they have to die to themselves, but... If we know, if they know that others have gone through it and survived, maybe that'll encourage them. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, Pat. Uh, great thoughts, and we appreciate you calling us. Thank you. Thank you for receiving my call. God bless you both. I love you, and it was an extraordinary message. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pat. Uh, yeah. Phone lines are open, 800-338-7060. And locally in Baltimore, 410-483-3700. Give us a call, friends, and uh, quite quite easy, just like Pat did, picking up that phone, giving us a call, and encouraging listeners around the globe. Uh, let's go to David next. David is joining us from up in uh, Maine, from the great state of Maine. David, welcome. Well, thank you for taking my call. And uh, 
Yeah, children uh, definitely uh, bring things to us that we don't deserve. Uh, I took my two grandsons fishing for a couple days, and uh, one of them caught me smoking, and I said, uh, rotten, stinking cigarettes. I said, they're going to kill me pretty soon. And my grandson looked at me and said, well, at least you'll be in a better place than you are now. And uh, I've never had uh, an outboard yet that I didn't want to unclamp and throw in the ocean. But uh, I bet I started that a hundred times in those two days. And uh, now my right shoulder is totally shot. I can't even carry it around anymore. So, But uh, it was wonderful. You never really know your grandchildren until you get them out in a boat or in the camping or something. And... Uh, Camp life must be a wonderful thing, but uh, I'm getting to know them a lot better because you're out there and uh, and you just get to know their mannerisms and what they get excited about and whatnot. So I just I had to share that. That's all. Thank you, David. Great to hear from you. And pray for my arm, if you would. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Lord, we do pray for David. Uh, it seems like he's injured himself trying to get that. That motor started, so we pray that he would heal up well and that you would encourage his heart. And Thank you for his life of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, you David. You. Appreciate it. We're going to go now from Maine to Malawi. Uh, Pastor Chris is joining us from the country of Malawi. And Pastor Chris, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good to talk to you. It's been a little while. And you have a new uh, team member there, don't you? She arrived yesterday. Uh, Lena Kilini was here for the next three months. And, um, yes, yeah, she arrived, and she kind of just saw a little bit of the town today. And, um, and so, yeah, we're excited to have her in Bible College here. It's going to be a great time. That's wonderful. And um, we're, we're also asking for prayer, too. We were supposed to meet Pastor Ronaldo on the summer harvest trip to um, Namibia. But it didn't work out like that. One of us tested for positive for COVID, which I think was a false positive because nobody had any symptoms. And then so we've had to postpone it, but we're going to do kind of our own uh, trip and we're going to visit Lesotho. We're going to visit Namibia also and possibly another uh, city in the mix there, I think with Alina as well. And that'll be in October. So we would love to have prayers for that. We'll do that right now. Anything else before we uh, let you go? Um, just to say thank you for your laid down lives. We're watching messages during the week, and um, also that our Bible school started very well. All other churches have been forced to stay closed in Africa. Ours are open, and our Bible college is almost full, so we're blessed in that way. Praise God. We've seen a lot of the different Bible colleges, both here in the States and overseas, starting up again, and it sounds like you've got a full house for yours. Yeah, so far it's been great. 160 students, they've come back. I'm sure some will trickle in as we as we go on, but yeah, it's been a blessing, really, and God's protected us immensely. Mm. Praise God. Well, Father, we pray for this uh, missions trip that the church in Malawi is going to take to Namibia. And we pray, Father, for uh, good health. We pray that no one would test positive for the virus. Everyone would uh, begin this journey of faith uh, healthy, COVID-free, and remain that way. And use them greatly, Lord, as they visit these different cities and these different churches, building up the body of Christ, winning souls that can be added to your church, and, and just protect them and cover them each step of the way. Thank you for their new team member, uh, Alina, and just bless her, use her greatly while she's there in these next few months. And thank you for Pastor Chris, his family, the team, continue to use them in a, a mighty and a powerful way for your namesake. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks, Pastor. Thanks for the call. All right. God bless. Chad Brockmeyer has written to us, uh, Pastor Shaler, he says, the war for our identity is won by the little victorious battles. God is in no hurry to make a man. When he does, it is complete and free. Thirty years and counting, he is still building me. That was
was a great word today. That's from uh-huh. Chad of uh-huh. Indiana. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes a man more precious than the gold of Ophir. Isaiah thirteen twelve. Um, he he said he's in no hurry to make a man. It seems that uh, we really should uh, learn lessons. You know, you can learn a lesson and then you need to learn it again and again and again. And it becomes, uh, you know, the mentality that you adopt in faith is like something that you you process, you know, through your life. So, um, you know, when, when you have a trial, when you're 20 and the same, you know, you, it's again a question of priorities when I'm 30 and then another question you know, period of doubt or unbelief when I'm 40. And then I, uh, I find God again. And then when, and on, it goes through your life. So it might be that, um, this is how it goes, that there's just a, it boils down to, I think, just realizing the character of God as a God of all grace and, and to know him is really the point in life. And you mentioned earlier how easy it is for a soul to become conditioned by old habits, sinful habits. And couldn't we say the same thing? Uh, It it may take some time, but the soul can be conditioned by faith. Mm -hmm. The soul can be conditioned to respond to God and and to hear his word and to respond to it, receive it, reflect it. Um, So, I mean, I think we can say that confidently that our souls uh, have been and are continued uh, continue to be conditioned by faith. Yeah, and what if, what if at the end of your life, ninety percent of your life was a spirit-filled life? That would be incredible. Well, what did you get at the end? Let's say, at the end of my life, I I don't have much material things. I don't. Maybe I don't have a family, or there might be things that I don't have that way. But if ninety percent of my life or 70%, I think, is high, it was a spirit-filled life, then that gl- greatly glorifies my Heavenly Father. That puts a lot of treasure up in heaven, and this is essentially my character or my nature. That's a huge accomplishment, that it glorifies God, you know. That's a great thing, you know. That's like defining your life. But if you have um, your... Uh, uh, contrarily, if 90% of your life is a Christian, is in the flesh, how much unnecessary um, chatter, how much unnecessary divided loyalties, how much unnecessary confusion, how much, how many broken relationships, how much disappointment I live in, and that's a totally different picture. Yeah, it, well, the one life, the life of the flesh, is it's it's almost there's just filled with regret you could look back at that kind of life and regret so much of it whereas a life of faith uh, you can just look back even the rough spots in the life of faith are valuable and essential to helping us grow yeah 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 exactly. so many good things can come out of that oh yeah absolutely life of faith is is of incredible value and like you said that becomes like a habit, and that that gives me experience in the spirit-filled way that I have experience of love, I have peace, I have joy, I have good habits and care about people. So that life is fa- experience is following faith, whereas in the flesh, my experience really drives my life and determines, you know, much of what it is that I'm deciding and how I'm living. Yeah, and that was really the essence of what we heard today. Even even faith, uh, when tribulation comes, I mean, that's just, you know, welcome to the process of growing and getting to know God in a deeper, more intimate way, and watch your faith develop, even in trouble, even in tribulation. Whereas before, you know, we, we... we saw trouble, it came to us, and we just wanted to get through it or get rid of it as quickly as we could. Now we see it in a completely different light as something that's used by God to develop our faith. Well, it is a life of faith, friends, and we hope that 
many of you, well, not all of you, uh, have that life of faith, and perhaps there are some listeners today tuning into the Grace Hour, never made a decision for Christ. Uh, why postpone that decision? Um, you can receive him as your Savior. You can ask him to come into your heart, cleanse you of your sin. He'll give you a new heart, a new mind, a new way of thinking, a whole new nature, which is what everyone longs for. So give your heart to Christ today. Say, Jesus, come into my heart, cleanse me of my sin, save my soul, and I want a relationship with you. And if you made a decision like that, trusted Christ in a personal way, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know, and we have some material that we could send out to you that help you get started in this new life of faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, could, we could say that when the disciples followed Jesus and he left, they were never the same. But they did have a fear maybe that, oh, maybe we will just go back to being, you know, we just, just you know, we have been with a very special person, the Messiah. And I mean, are we just, we're just common people. But he said, wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father and, um, and you will have power. And this is not just for them, but this is for us in Acts 1.8. And believe it with me today. Come to Christ and live by faith in him, and the Holy Spirit will, will lead you, use you, and teach you. You need Bible teaching. We all need it very much, Bible teaching, and to have the right mindset in regards to who God is and to walk from faith to faith. Amen. And on that note, friends, we're going to close, but we can also let you know that you could always come and attend one of these Bible College classes that are available here at Maryland Bible College and Seminary. That's where you could learn about your Bible. So again, if that's something that uh, might interest you, just let us know, and we'll tell you how you can come, sit in on one of the classes. If you enjoy it, you may want to enroll in our Bible College. Thanks so much for joining us uh, today, friends, all of you that were listening on Facebook Live, YouTube Live. Appreciate you weighing in and sharing your thoughts with us. We're going to be back for tomorrow's broadcast, the Friday edition of the Grace Hour, in a little less than 24 hours, and we hope you'll join us then. Until then, may God bless you. Thanks for listening to The Grace Hour. Our live program airs weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Grace Hour is a ministry of the Greater Grace Church. You are invited to visit Greater Grace at 6025 Moravia Park Drive, Baltimore, Maryland, 21206. For more information, go to gracehour.org or call 1-800-338-7060.